up guys, welcome back to the Detail Garage. Today we're outside and we're gonna be continuing our process on this Honda Odyssey. If you watched our first video, we took care of the inside, vacuuming the carpets, cleaning up the seats, and getting the look in its best. And now we move to the exterior where you can see it's got dirt, bugs, water spots, just all kinds of nasty mess all over the exterior. Now obviously it's not super dirty, but this is a daily driver. A lot of you guys have cars where you can't wash it every single day or even every week. This is exactly what this car has, just that light layer of dust, brake dust, everything that's on the surface. So we're gonna show you how to properly remove it, get this car looking best, you know. This is a mom car, so we're gonna show a little bit of love, a little bit of respect to our moms out there, get this car looking all right. Now to start off with our detail, we're gonna begin by cleaning the wheels because as I've said before, the wheels are always the dirtiest area and this car is no exception. So like I said, we're gonna start with the wheels and this Honda Odyssey has the OEM factory wheels on here, but you can see that it's just brake dust, road free, as well as some old dress dance on the tire, just taking away from the overall look. So to clean it all off safely, we're gonna be using some Diablo wheel gel. This is one of my favorite wheel cleaners because you can use this on any kind of wheel, whether it be OEM, chrome, matte. Simply cleans it and safely removes anything that's on the surface because brake dust, road debris, all the kind of stuff is really corrosive, but it's also very abrasive so it can scratch, it can pit, all kinds of bad stuff if you don't take it off the surface correctly. That's why we have here some really good wheel detailing brushes like the Easy Reach wheel brush. It has a nice soft bristle that gets in between the caliper, the rotor, the barrel gets it all the way to the back to make sure that when you look through the wheel, it's just perfectly clean. And then to clean the face of the wheel, we have a green flag tip brush, very soft so it won't scratch as you take off the bulk of the brake dust and road debris. And then lastly, we'll clean off the old dressing using a stiff blue brush. Now over here, I have a bucket full of water with a dirt trap inside. That dirt trap's gonna prevent any of the abrasive particles from back onto the surface. And the Diablo wheel gel is one gonna be cleaning, but it's also acting as lubrication. So again, that we don't scratch the surface. And now to activate the suds, I'm just going to take our pressure washer and then prime the bucket. So to begin, we're gonna rinse down the wheel. This is gonna help knock down the loose, heavier brake dust, road debris, and anything else that's on the surface. And then we can move on to the actual wheel detailing process. So we'll begin with the easy reach wheel brush. Just grabbing some foam, get it attached to the bristles. And then starting at the highest point, we're gonna work our way around the rim. Just working back and forth. It easily picks off the grime or any kind of filth that was on the surface. You can see the kind of brown runoff that's pulling out. That's just everything that was hiding in there, taken away from the overall look. We'll go back to the bucket, just kind of rinse it off. And continue the process. So you can see this brush works really well for areas like this where it has to collapse and conform to these small crevices. This way, no matter what, you're always gonna get as much of that brake dust off the surface to make it look its best. So once you've taken care of the hard to reach and the barrel area of the wheels, now you can move on to the face. Like I said, we're using the green flag tip brush and you just work your way around the rim, again, starting at the top and then work your way to the bottom. And the reason for this if it isn't obvious, it's because the dirt travels down, gravity pulls all that kind of grime. And if you decided to work your way from top to bottom, or bottom to top rather, you're just gonna bring that filth into areas you've already cleaned. So this is going to save yourself time, effort, and extra work. And also just make the wheel look its best. And now lastly, we'll get the tire. It has some kind of old dressing on there, but Diablo wheel gel easily cuts through the filth to reveal a fresh natural tire. And now to wrap up the wheel detailing process, we're gonna just rinse it off, move on to the other three, and then we can actually jump on the body. So after cleaning the wheels, we're gonna move on to the actual body. We're gonna rinse it down, starting with our regular pressure washer here. Today we're playing with a new toy. It's an electric pressure washer, so you guys who live in an apartment or have noise restrictions, now you've got a few options. 2000 PSI electric pressure washer works pretty well. So we're gonna start by rinsing down from top to bottom. And also we've had the car sitting in the shade for a few hours now, so it's nice and cool to touch. Uh, if you're working outside, obviously you need to be aware of a few things. If the body is really hot, especially the glass, you put cold water on there, it's not gonna be good. So we've let the car cool off and then we brought it outside here and it's actually pretty quiet. It's pretty cold outside today. Not necessarily cold, but it's actually pretty chilly today. But uh, we'll start by rinsing it down at the top. This is where we'll knock down the loose dirt and debris, just like we did with the wheels. And then we can actually get into the foaming process.
So I just finished rinsing down this minivan and that took care of the heavier, loose dirt that was sitting on top of the flat panels and the doors. And now we can actually move on to the foaming process. And if you don't know what the foam is doing, one, it's obviously cleaning, but just like with the wheels, it's adding lubrication. So we're one, not adding any scratches or swirls, but also depending on the soap that you're using, it's also enhancing that shine. So today we've gone with Mr. Pink. This is one of my favorite soap that produces a ton of suds. We're gonna use it in our wash bucket as well as our big mouth foam cannon. And this is what's gonna help aerate properly so we can get enough foam to cover the entire vehicle. And it's also going to help prevent any kind of paint damage by swirls or scratches. So we'll just take a couple ounces and put it into our wash bucket. All right, let's do this for reals. And we'll also add a couple ounces to our foam cannon here. As I mentioned, this is the Big Mouth Foam Cannon. This produces a ton of suds with using less PSI, but also it has a pretty neat feature where you can turn the head so that you can foam either vertically or horizontally. This way you can cover any size vehicle or any shape vehicle to produce enough suds to give you one, that really cool snow foam look, but also it's gonna prevent any kind of swirls or scratches. I'm just gonna reattach the top. And a common question that I get, especially lately, is how do you get those kind of suds that we see in the videos? Well, I'll tell you. We've got warm water in this bottle and also a couple ounces. And a lot of people shake the bottle violently, which creates the foam inside of here. But instead, we're just gonna mix it together. Thoroughly, you know, spreading the soap around. But this is not, you know, crazy or aggressively shaking the bottle that it's creating the foam inside of the canister. But rather, it's gonna let the foam cannon do its job and properly aerate. But if you're still not getting that right kind of foam, check what kind of PSI and uh, gallons per minute your machine is putting out. I recommend using about 1,000 PSI and a little over 1.4 gallons per minute. And if you're still having trouble with your foam cannon, check for blockages or basically anything else that can cause restrictions. So now we're gonna attach this to the pressure washer, start our foaming process, and again, we're gonna start at the top, working our way down, and then we're gonna go into the actual scrubbing way of the stubborn areas and this will give us the best results. Now, a lot of people wanna know if you can do a touchless wash. This car obviously doesn't have a lot of dust on there or dirt. Uh, in some cases you can, but if it's been raining out where you've got set in water spots or some kind of bird droppings, you still need to scrub it to get the best results. But in the case of this car, I'm gonna show you how to properly do it with our wash mat. Hello. <laughs> So I've just finished foaming down the minivan using the foam cannon. Now I'm gonna activate the suds in our wash bucket. And then, like I said, we're gonna start scrubbing it down because there's still some stubborn areas of bee poop, bird droppings, and some road tar. But this is basically just gonna add lubrication, as I mentioned, as well as some uh, cleaning power. And we'll get this car looking its best. Now, in case you're new to this channel, this is a dirt trap. This is what we put in all of our buckets for added filtration, and this is gonna keep any of the abrasive particles of whatever could be on the vehicle from returning to the surface. So as you get your wash mitt dirty, you're gonna come back to your rinse bucket or your wash bucket, grind that against the platform, and then it's gonna help release any of the abrasive particles to put it underneath the platform, and it's gonna keep it off the vehicle. So just using a Chanel microfiber wash mitt, I'm gonna grab some suds here, and then go back to the top of the vehicle, and we're gonna start working in straight lines to prevent any kind of swirls. A little tip when you're working on a large vehicle uh, to get a step ladder or a step stool to get the top of the vehicle or the flat panels. And then just for everything else, I work in layers just so that we're getting, you know, the most abrasive stuff off first and then not bringing it to areas we've already cleaned. So by giving the foam a minute to saturate the surface, it's actually helped loosen up the bee poop or bird droppings. This way it just comes off nice and easily with one wipe, not having to really scrub on it. And this is preventing you from adding too much pressure, which causes scratches. And now we'll just take our dirty wash mitt, go to our second bucket, press it all the way to the bottom. 
and this is to release any of the grime that was on the microfiber or that it collects. And we're gonna take it outside of the bucket and wring it out on the ground, grab some more soap, and we can keep on washing. Well guys, we're just about done with the detail on this Honda Odyssey. We started off by washing it using Mr. Pink, which took care of the heavier, loose dirt and debris. Also, it removed those bee poop marks and the bird droppings. Now you see it has this beautiful shine. It's also enhanced that shine, because now you can see all that metallic flake. Now, there's a few more things on this car that I still want to touch up, so I'm going to get back to drying it. But in the meantime, you guys can head over to our website, chemicalguys.com, to check out these products for yourself. If you like this video, or if you have a minivan, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time right here in the Detail Garage.